Alright, I hope you guys are doing okay. My name is Fernando and I'm just going to show up a uh, show this little setup that I have to visualize sound waves and how that could be interesting in some applications. So here we're going to be playing with an ultrasonic levitation device and we're going to be looking at the acoustic field of said ultrasonic device. We actually have two types of ultrasonic devices. One is a uh, phased array emitter, which is shown here. It's just a flat PCB with 64 actuators, and then they, they can be independently controlled to produce an acoustic field. And in this case, we're, we have a, a device that focuses, has two, pos, two focal points, and this is thanks to Dr. Azir Marzo, which is actually uh, kind of a legend on the acoustic tractor beam stuff. And basically, I'm using this device as one of the uh, his device as one of uh, my experiments. So this thanks for the instructable. I actually will put the link in the description. Okay, so this is what's called a shadow graph, and a shadow graph is uh, an optical apparatus, an optical setup. This is one type, the Z type shadow graph, that is able to visualize disturbances in air density or more specifically in index of refraction. So the way a shadow graph works is actually rather simple. So we have here an LED or a light source and this light source is being uh, pulsed or triggered by this function generator and this is going to play a role in how the LED flashes and shows the sound waves. This, the LED shines through a hole and this pinhole looks like a light, uh, a point-like source to us. Okay, so then this point source, it emanates light everywhere, pretty much everywhere. But the light that, that arrives at this mirror can bounce back and eventually make it to the camera through the other mirror. But because this mirror has its focal point at about where the LED is shining from, then the, when, the, when the light from the LED from the hole uh, gets in the mirror, it bounces back as a, as a set of parallel light, light rays. So this is what's called a collimated light beam. And so there exists a collimated beam between these two mirrors. This mirror here, then it focuses the light again at the focal point, which is about right in front of the camera lens. And then the camera lens is here just to define where exactly I want to be focusing on. And the interesting thing about the shadow graph is that if there is any subject here, it doesn't need to be an acoustic wave, it can be anything, any, any thermal disturbance in air or whatever, it will deflect ever so slightly this parallel beam. And because the distance here is rather large, then what's going to happen is this, this very small deflection of the beam is actually going to land elsewhere in the mirror and eventually it's going to make to a different pixel in the camera sensor. Which means that very small disturbances in the density or in the index of refraction of air turn out to be large disturbances in the pixel space, which means that we're going to have, we're going to be able to visualize these disturbances. And it turns out that if you have a sensitive enough apparatus, and it has to be rather sensitive, then you can visualize sound. And I'll post a link also in the description to my blog showing the math behind it and how sensitive you actually need it to be. And this is also the reason why the videos look a little bit grainy because we actually have to magnify the sensitivity of the camera, blow off the image in order to actually see these variations. Of course, this is a beautiful, Pretty much um, state-of-the-art high-speed camera thanks to Florida State University and also to FCAP which are uh, the lab uh, which is the lab that I work for and I am able to do this uh, kind of uh, independent research with it so the high-speed camera it it basically is here such that we can visualize the sound waves pretty much in real time. Of course, in the case of these ultrasonic transducers, the sound waves produced are of the order of 40 kilohertz. So this is tuned to resonate at 40 kilohertz. 
which means that the wave basically oscillates 40,000 times per second. So it's like very fast pulsations in the, in the, in the middle of the air. And you know, unfortunately, even state-of-the-art technology can't currently take HD video at 40 kilohertz. Uh, this, this camera here is capable of 25 kilohertz, I think. But what we can do is we can use a phenomenon that I call forced aliasing. So we use aliasing, which is a phenomenon of sampling that I actually have a, another lecture for. And we forcefully make the camera skip a lot of what's going on in the middle of the cycle, but it takes the next picture such that it looks like a continuous movie as it would look like if the camera was actually capturing the entirety of the movie. And this is only possible because the waves being generated are generated at a single frequency. So we can actually choose to take the pictures at a different rate than the, the original frequencies rate. So this, of course, is a little bit complicated. There's a lot of math behind it, but it turns out it works. Okay, so in this case here, I'm going to show another device. So this one is the phased array device. And as you can see, it's already floating a little particle here. And I'm going to go to my computer and I'm going to send it a signal to play a sequence, which basically makes the particle make a circular motion. As you can see now, the particle is moving sideways from, of course, the, the camera's perspective. I'm going to actually pick up the camera and um, move the camera such that you can actually see it's a circle, uh, a circle motion. Yeah, so I'm picking up the camera and um, now showing that the particle is actually moving also sideways in the other direction. So it's actually a circular motion and it's pretty cool. It's like a mid-air motion of the particle. So now we're going to be looking at the at the sound waves that are produced by by the uh, by this device, and as you can see here, the particle is uh, just floating in midair and being levitated by the sound waves. And the sound field is actually rather complex. Uh, and I'm, now I'm going to just accelerate the video so you can see the motion of the particle without the uh, time scale of the motion of the wave. And I think that's probably it for this video. So I appreciate, I hope you appreciated this and maybe this inspires you into making your own shadow graph and performing some nice sound visualization experiments. All right. I'll see you next time. Bye.